I don't know what happened. <laughs> what? What? Did you guys see it? Yeah, but then yeah. it went it like, kind of like it paused. It was and yeah, got choppy sometimes. It was choppy. Aww. I wonder if I wonder if last time you started the video and then you went live because remember there's a there's like a little gap before it starts counting. Oh, so start the video first and then go live. Yeah. All right. That's I think not we have what to I do, do it though. again. Let's be quiet and we're gonna play. That's, that's not what I do though. I hit the live button and then I immediately hit the button to go right away. No, no, but I think Cynthia's right. Last time yeah. I did the video first and then I hit the live button. So okay, let's just see. Ooh, somebody else is in the house. Ooh. Andrea. Hi. Hey. Uh, Are you gonna do this? You're gonna do this so we can uh, yeah. okay, hold on. <laughs> How so are you? I'm okay. Now you okay, yeah, no. <laughs> Your phone's not turning. Your phone is not. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no can do. <laughs> Hey, Melanie, how are you? Yeah. I only saw one second. Um, okay, so Melanie only saw one second of the intro. Uh, we're going to do it a different way in the future. I think Cynthia's right. I did it wrong this time. I did it Rick's way, whatever. <laughs> but if oh. she only saw one second, then that, that means my way is better. Because if you play the video first, that means she's even going to see less of the video. Okay, what, so let's not worry about it. I'm going to do it yeah. next week. I think Cynthia's right. Last time we did it, we played the video first. Oh, I forgot to put the pillow up. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, you don't, there's no love from you, Rick. There's no love. Where's your pillow? Yeah, hidden back there. <laughs> all <about the joy. laughs> Hey, Andrea, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm at soccer practice, so if my background noise is loud, just let me know. <clears throat> It's okay. He's frozen. I know you don't have to come on the show, girl. We love having you, but I know you with the kids doing soccer. Well, uh, we got in a fight, so I'm to stay in the car. Oh. <laughs> so. uh oh. <laughs> Which godchild of mine is? Who uh, do you think? What? Who do you think? Is it Natalia? I guess, obviously. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No way. Uh, so, I mean, I can okay. see her from here, but... Okay, I have a question. Not, she not told not you you have to stay in the car? Um, No, there was a lot of silence and then some door slamming. So I'm just going to like let it ride for right now. And then we'll have our discussion when she comes back to the car. <laughs> okay. And how long is soccer practice? Uh, Like an hour and a half. Wow, I'm so glad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let her get all that aggression out and then come back in and <laughs> start her up all over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I thought as I got older, I've said this so many times and I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it again. I thought as I got older, I would regret the decision not to have children. But I have to tell you, as I get older and every single day it is proven to me. What a brilliant, magnificent, genius choice I made at Never Wanting to have. I love them, but it just never ends. You no, know? It's not. Yeah. And I'm just godmother and auntie, and I'm so over children right now. Love them. Love them. But, yeah. Uh, so how are you doing, Andrea? Because we haven't seen you in a few weeks. I'm fine. Did you feel the earthquake in Malibu this morning? Um, you know, I was doing the dishes and I heard some like jangling or whatever. And I just thought that it was like my phone pressing against the cabinet. So I didn't really feel anything. I just okay. heard. So I've been here 30 years. Okay. And Rick, I just want to say you did not reach out. I didn't even know. <laughs> you, I'm just letting you know who did reach out though. Who was texting me? Carmen, <laughs> I just got to. It touched my heart, though, because she was like, I just got a notification. There was an earthquake. I'm like, she got a notification. The one with all the merch. <laughs> the one with all the merch over there. Right, right, right. Um, but can I tell you, I've been here 30 years. Nothing has ever fallen in, in any place I've lived whenever we've had one of these. But it really was right in Malibu. And it was like, four. Yeah. you know, 4.7 ain't nothing for us, right? right? But I was so close to it. 
And it was a rolling earthquake. So it was like for a little bit. Those ones kind of I like those. Those are the fun ones. I know. Because then you kind of like, ooh, ooh, you're you like, take all this. You're like, ooh. Is it, is it going to be a big one? Oh, no. We're cool. <laughs> As she's washing the dishes. Like, like, I'm over here like trying to do my hair before I go to work. I'm like, ooh. It was so funny. But one of my pieces of art fell to the ground. I was oh, shocked. Oh, really? it like, it, I, I was like, oh. Oh, no. Still wasn't that thrown by it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, it was just, but that was 30 years. <laughs> Knock on wood, because you know tonight we're going to be sleeping, get some motherfucking big, and I'm going to shut the fuck up. But <laughs> um, you'll be like the guy next door? <laughs> wait, what do you mean the guy next door? Didn't you say the guy next door was screaming, my first earthquake? Oh, because, oh, not that she, because across the way, clearly we have new fucking neighbors who don't know how to shut their windows or realize other people live in the neighborhood. <laughs> and he's screaming, oh, it's my first earthquake, my first earthquake. I was like, <laughs> bring it down a notch, newbie. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. uh, Melanie, a rolling, she's asking in the comments what a rolling earthquake is. It So there's... There's several different types of earthquakes, but one would be that and like that jerk kind of you're shook and it's like really quick and like everything moves and and you're done. And yeah. it, but a rolling earthquake feels more like a like a a big truck is driving by for a long time. Like mm. and I mean long time like 20 seconds or something and it's like rumbling. But it's like a, a big truck, 18 wheeler that shouldn't be in your alleyway or something. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so it, it rolls and it goes for a little bit longer. I think that's the right definition. That's just my experience. And Drea, you would know because you were born and raised here. So, well, I wasn't born there, but yeah. And I went through the 93 earthquake, which was gnarly. <clears throat> yeah, wasn't that um, Northridge? That's Northridge, right? That was in Northridge, and I lived in Sherman Oaks at the time, and that was just, that was the worst thing that's ever, the worst one I've ever felt. It was violent, you know, extended, just shaking like this. It was right. like you were in a snow globe and someone was doing this. It was crazy. Thanks. Every single thing in our house broke. Every single thing. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And um, even where I live now, this place, which is usually pretty, again, knock on wood, throw salt, spit wherever, do all the ugly things. Um, Santa Monica is a pretty safe area, supposedly. But this place got knocked out, too. So it really was a disaster. What, do, do we know how, how big was that earthquake? Was it like a 5.9 or seven or something i think you know what i don't remember i think it was a let's seven. ask google yeah hey, google. google i don't know how big was the north ridge earthquake in california in 1993 might have been 94 in january hey, Maria. <laughs> city of los angeles 30 years ago today Six point seven. I don't need you to read the whole fucking Wikipedia page. Six point seven. <laughs> and it says thirty oh years ago today. Hi Mario. Mm -hmm. Did I miss Mario? It I'm was so just came in. in January. <laughs> what? What, years, Andrea? I uh, Cynthia said that it that Google was saying it was thirty years ago today, but it wasn't. It was in January. No. <clears throat> and Google said it was thirty years, to, but it was January. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, clearly not today, dumbass. But that's okay, Google. It's all right. We, we believe you. <laughs> it might have been 94 now that I think about it. But well, anyway. here's the thing. It wasn't 94 because I, being a crazy person, after the big earthquake, I was like, I'm moving to L.A. <laughs> I like, Where else would I go? <laughs> and I want to live right in the area, right along the beach where it all is a mess. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Mario. <laughs> Let me say happy wait. birthday to my grandson. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. What did I miss? Oh, I said happy birthday on your Facebook page, right? To yeah. Xavier. <laughs> Melanie said, not sure how I would do in an earthquake. I've never been through one. It really, honestly, I mean, I don't, again, don't want to say this because I don't want to jinx the joy I've had living here, but <laughs> I think it's worse with all the hurricanes and tornadoes and all the, all, it's all that weird anticipation, like, okay, we're going to have a, a snow front is coming in. You better lock down and go to the grocery store. Earthquakes don't happen. You don't know. It's just going to happen. You're going to be doing your thing. It's just going to happen. You don't really have much time to prepare. And, and, and it's not like in the movies, again, please 
the universe, the gods above, don't jinx my ass tonight. <laughs> but it's just, it's just shaking. And then it's over within, what's the longest, Andrea? Like 30 seconds? I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, sometimes they can go on for a while, but it's, it's over pretty quickly. And most of them are no big deal. It's just, you know, you get some big ones that are nasty and, you know, but. Usually like that kind of one fun. that I was not here for. Go ahead. I said, usually it's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is because you start to like, I started laughing because I was doing my hair. I was putting some oil in my hair and I was like, ooh, ooh. Because <laughs> it was a rolling one. And then I had to hear, you know, crazy person. And then I was like, ugh. Because I, I, here's the thing. Again, I'm going to bitch about my neighbors. These are new neighbors across the way. They're not my neighbors next door in my building. You know what I mean? But they don't realize how loud they are. And like, so they're screaming on their balconies at like six in the morning and uh. they don't realize they're screaming. They're just talking, but other people are sleeping bitches. You know what I mean? Like anyways, whatever. So Alma just said, I'd rather an earthquake than to be worried about hurricanes and tornadoes. Exactly. Or the snowstorm thing freaks me out now sorry cynthia sorry rick <laughs> <laughs> a few months ago there was one in new jersey and we actually felt it up here but oh yeah i thought somebody hit my house a car because i just heard boom and i was like i got up looked out the window there's nobody out there i'm like what was that i didn't even know what new it was Jersey had an earthquake oh that's right you told yeah. me you texted me yeah. a song yeah and it was like a 3.2 or something like that it was yeah like, it was maybe yeah, something like that small. I was like, please, I'm at work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I that was my first one. Is like everybody comes out from their various wherever they're like, was that an earthquake? Was that an earth? Did you guys feel that? Did you feel it? <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone goes back to work or does whatever yeah. they're doing. It's like, but guess. initially we're all like, are you? Eh, eh, eh. You do that little hesitance, like to see if it was. And then of course you go and check your apps. And you check like all your things. Like I, I used to go on Twitter, but I don't have Twitter anymore. So I really didn't That's check. That's how I first got on Twitter is from an earthquake because I was doing the like, was that an earthquake? What was that? You know, because we're all like, am I, am I there? Was that an earthquake? Yeah. Quake. Yeah. So I got on Twitter because I was like, oh, and that's sort of what introduced me to couldn't even find it. Now, if you wanted to. The, 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 well, so many people have gotten off of Twitter, some of the big companies, so I don't even know, but I'm sure that app is still on there. My app didn't go off until the earthquake went off. Usually it does it a few seconds beforehand. I don't know what they think I'm going to do a few seconds before. <laughs> like, oh, Time to dive under the table. Coming. Well, here's the thing. It sounds the same as the Amber Alerts, so it really annoys me. Uh, I like want to, No offense, I'm happy for the Amber Alerts because we want to always protect children. They want to get no fucking mail or anything. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> saying, like, it's the same sound, and so, and it's like, alert, alert, alert. Um, and it's also the presidential alert. Remember we had that one presidential alert that time mm, that mm -hmm. when they tested it or whatever, it's that same sound. It's like wow. scary or whatever. So, but mine didn't go off. So, and it's only a couple seconds before. Eh, eh. Let me get the pictures yeah. off the wall. Hurry up. Wait. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to get under my desk. I didn't even think about getting under my desk. That's the last <laughs> place I want to be. I'd be claustrophobic. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Okay, I'm the wrong none person to talk about up. earthquake prevention. What? Yeah, none of us are going to get up until we think it's a thing, right? Like, we're all doing the thing where we're sitting around like, is that a thing? Did I get up? <laughs> and then it's late. over. Yeah, it's over. And if it's not, well, okay, it's too, now everything's going to come down all over you, so you're stuck right. there. I'm going to try to get out my house, but yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know why we're talking about this. Like, like I brought it up because there was an earthquake today in California. And I just want to say thank you to my friends who all text me and other people who really don't give a shit, but pretend to all the time. I did not know. I swear. <laughs> I did not know. Well, here's the thing. I love my family and friends back East. Because there will be, like, they'll get something. They'll see the news and it'll say, like, wildfires ravaging, blah, 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 California. And I'll get text messages, Facebook messages. I'll get all these messages. And I'm like, it's, like, closer to San Francisco, but thanks for checking it. You know what I mean? Like, I had one friend who was like, it would be really helpful, Carmen, when something happens. If you do that thing on Facebook where it does the, um, you check in and say you're safe. Oh, from mark something. yourself safe. Yeah, yeah. 
okay. I'm like, I would, except it's six hours from me. Like, it's not <laughs> like, do you want me to just every day say I'm safe today? Like, I don't know. <laughs> People, California is huge. It's really, really big. So you only have to worry about me if it's in like West LA, if it's in Los Angeles, Malibu, Santa Monica, Venice, that area. And we don't care about uh, Andrea because she doesn't live near me. She's like an hour. Where are you again? In Castaic. Santa Clarita. Yeah, Santa, yeah. Santa Clarita. So she's far away from me. I don't even worry about her. Well, you guys yeah. have more fires. Yeah, there was a fire at Isabella's school just today. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? <laughs> Earthquakes, fires, what? We love firemen on this show. We just want to bring oh, that up. Boy, here we go again. <laughs> we love firemen on this show. Shout out to the firemen. <laughs> Andrea's like, what's going on? I'll fill you in later. <laughs> yeah. It's TV I love show. a fireman, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, um, Cynthia has me addicted to fireman shows, and I've gone way off the deep end now. I'm watching every... <laughs> Every first responder show that's ever been made now, <laughs> like I'm addicted. Um, so I wanted to also just give some love. A lot of you know that we lost James Earl Jones this past week, mm-hmm. aka I guess a lot of people know him as Darth Vader, the voice of Darth Vader. Uh, but of course, he is and was a extremely talented and incredible actor of theater. He was also the voice of the Lion King. I guess people know that and um, mm-hmm. CNN or whatever, but. Uh, just an amazing presence. And on my Facebook page, I posted a picture of me with him when I got to meet him, which is a whole other story uh, of how that happened. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Richard Kaler, who was the person who introduced me to one of my heroes. The other hero that I did get to meet, I want to mention too, was Maya Angelou. So I was thinking about this and I don't have a picture with me and Maya Angelou. I was thinking about how profound, because it was such a big deal for me to meet James Earl Jones And the reason why is for people who don't know, I stuttered as a kid and people who do know, know that I stutter now. And as I'm saying it, I'm trying not to, right? So, uh, but that's what all the odds are. Like, you know, you, you, you compensate with other ways. And one of the things that was great about meeting him was he still stuttered into adulthood, you know, and it was part of his whole process. And it's just magnificent to hear Uh, to see someone who had a stuttering issue and not just overcome it, but you work through it. And I knew who he was as a kid and he'd always become like kind of my hero back then. Uh, But I was wondering if there were any celebrities that you have, any of you have ever met that would be that changed your life or changed something about them or whatever. I sent you guys a little note about it. I don't know if you had any time to think about it at all, but Rick, did you, I can't say I've really met anybody oh famous, God, to be come. honest. I haven't <laughs> met anyone. <laughs> what is with Cynthia? You asked me to send you stuff. Okay, and <laughs> Yeah, he was. So I just wrote, saw a clip of James Earl Jones on Big Bang Theory. Oh my God, he was oh, so I funny. Uh, <laughs> I love that he did that. He did that when he was older, too. Mm-hmm. And Drea, you've met some celebrities. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't any big deal, though. <laughs> okay, but who did you? Mean? I never, I never met anybody who I really, really loved and respected their work or anything like that, or who said anything profound to me or did anything that you know. And mm-hmm. and it was just casual meetings that were you know in the context of what you know at a at a music show or something like that. So I I don't have any of those kind of celebrity encounters, and I. I don't think I would ever go up to someone. I can't think of anyone who I would go and like talk to and say, Hey, I love your whatever. I, that's just not oh something I would God. do. Yeah. I know what happened <laughs> when I met James Earl Jones, but <laughs> yeah. it's actually the opposite. So when I worked at a live action motion graphics company, we used to do a lot of commercials and I think it's even true today, but a lot of celebrities do a lot of international commercials. So, you know, they make a lot of money internationally using their name, even if the commercial doesn't air here. So we would do commercials for like American Express. We'd do commercials for, 
I don't know. Um, we did like the Super Bowl. We did a lot of different commercials. And I handled at the time, I was the controller of the company. I, you know, the company that I worked for, I was also a partner, but this was before then. But I basically was the money person. Okay. I never went on any shoot because I didn't need to be there. Once the shoot is happening, my job was pretty much done. Long story short, when I found out that James Earl Jones was going to be doing a spot that we were working on for the History Channel, um, I made sure that I talked to the executive producer and asked him if, if it would be okay if I came on set. And of course, it was kind of stupid because of course I can go on set. But I was like, I'm just going to be in the background. No big deal, whatever. And so I stayed in the background. I, I didn't let anyone else know I was coming. And I was just in the background watching him work. And just in awe because I was a little kid when I found out who he was and that he stuttered, you know what I mean? And it made me realize that stuttering wasn't going to be a hindrance because here he was Darth Vader, you know what I mean? And there, there were other celebrities that it, it was a, it was a school counselor who was showing me a chart of all these celebrities that had disabilities, like Whoopi Goldberg had uh, dyslexia and you know what I mean? And then he was the one that had the same thing I had. So I started just being kind of, into him a little bit. So I was in the studio, uh, you know, they were on set on studio and I was just in the background and they went to take a lunch break. And all of a sudden he starts walking towards me with three or four of his people. And I'm looking behind me because I'm thinking he's going to, you know, I'm trying to move out of the way. And he reaches out his hand and he's like, I am honored to always take a moment to meet the money lady. Like he called me the money lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I was shook. And, and uh, Richard was, you're hearing me stutter now. Richard uh, was kind of laughing because he had gone up to him and told him that I had been there all day and that he was a hero and that I never come on, you know what I mean? Told him whatever. And so I sat down with him and we had lunch and his hair and makeup person also was a stutter. We had this whole conversation about the process of stuttering and what it's like and, you know, how he, it was just amazing. And then I stayed there for the rest of the shoot. And then we had dinner together and it was just awesome. It was like, the, I would have never, I would have never, I mean, I've met and I've seen, especially because of where I live, it's not even where I work, it's where I live. You can throw a rock and hit a celebrity and you might not know it, but you can. <laughs> they never look like what you think they're going to look like, you know? Um, and I've never been thrown or whatever because you get used to it. You realize they're just regular people, you know? All right. If you guys have never met anybody, who would you like to meet? Julia Roberts. <gasps> I've never met her. Why would you like to meet her? I don't know. I just feel like she's kind of down to earth. Every time I see her, like, in interviews and stuff like that, she's always so, like, just so normal and just, like, jokes around and stuff like that. So I think she'd be cool. What's your, favorite, cool movie? <laughs> huh? What's your favorite movie she's been in? Um... I'm just going to say Pretty Woman for me. I will always yeah. love that movie. That's I don't know how cheesy yeah. it is. What? I said, that's just a classic. <laughs> it's my it mom's favorite. Andrea, yeah. did you ever see Pretty Woman? I have a feeling she didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, you, did. you still haven't yeah. seen. Steel Steel Magnolia is my favorite Julia Roberts movie, though, because it's like good for a cry. <clears throat> yes, Steel Magnolias is good. Yeah. And what's the one that I she won the that. Oscar for? What's the one that she won the Oscar for? Oh, come on. The one where she, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she fights the bad guys who are putting bad stuff into the soil. Oh, oh, Brock oh Aaron Brockovich. Yeah. Aaron Brockovich, right. She won the Oscar for that. Yeah, Aaron Bar Brockovich. I got to say, though, there was another movie called August Osage County. Her and Meryl oh, Streep. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so good. Miss so good. Pizza. That's right. Yes. It was the first movie I remember her in. She's been in a lot of good stuff. I just forget. I always think just about Pretty Woman because that was just such a fun movie. And not that I would, it's it's one of my favorite lines that she does say, but it's not that I want to be a prostitute and be picked up by a rich guy <laughs> at all. <laughs> at all. But you do love that kind of story of like, you know, her whole, it's, it's that favorite line where she says, um, it, it's not her, it's her friend. And they're at the patio at the um at the swimming patio area of the hotel mm -hmm. and 
Julia Roberts' character says to her, tell me, tell me one person it ever works out for. Tell me one person. And her friend goes, Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. one of the best ones because she's you know, <laughs> contemplating staying and she knows she can't stay with him because dreams don't come to <clears throat> You know what I mean? And I think one of the first things I did when I came out here, I mean, I think you kind of have to do it. You, you go look at all the places where they filmed Pretty Woman. Mm. yeah it's kind of cool yeah mm. although hollywood back then was really bad it was like you did not want to be in hollywood but they've had a change they've had a renaissance or whatever but that was a really bad area to hang out with so but, <laughs> like okay. that how dangerous or like how do you mean bad oh yeah dangerous and prostitutes and drugs oh. and really bad but it's not like that anymore they've had a revival or something i would say i don't know Andrea may disagree, but it's just a better place now. Yeah, it's more, uh, what's the word, gentrified now? Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, there are parts of it that were definitely bad for sure. <clears throat> um, okay, Rick? Uh, probably pretty much anybody from Star Trek, as corny as that sounds. Um, <laughs> if I had to pick one, if I had to pick one person, I know you're probably going to think you think a Marina started. No, I do not. Because no. we're not talking about your romantic dreams. We're yeah. talking about inspiration. Yeah. Who? I would probably want to talk to uh, Sir Patrick Stewart because not only was he Picard, but he was also Xavier in the X Men movies. I'm like two loves of mine. So. <laughs> Yeah, and just I feel like he's got, I mean, not trying to say he's super old, but he is, but he's got a lot of wisdom and I'd love to, you know, have a chat yeah. and you know, talk to him. That would be cool. I think it was Andrea who bummed me out about Patrick Stewart. I think it I think it was you, Andrea, who told me he maybe it wasn't you, because why would you know this? You're not really a gossipy kind of person. But he like married his makeup artist who's like 40 years younger than him. And I was like, and I'm done. I'm so done. <laughs> I was so annoyed. I don't know why it bothers me so much, but I was like, I just had more faith in you. Because he's like, how old is he? He's like in his 80s or something, right? I say more power to you, sir. <laughs> 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 I know I should be happy for her, but I don't know. It just it drove. I don't know why it bothers me. I'm very um. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Andrea, give us one celebrity you would bother to talk to if they forced you to. <laughs> um, I've I've had to think about this for a minute, but uh, Jane Fonda would probably be mine oh. she's lived an interesting life she you know she seems like a good you know, like it'd be a great conversation right she could talk about anything funny smart i'd like to meet know. them both together jane fonda and lily tomlin that would be hilarious to have yes oh my God. yes absolutely love them both that would be super fun <laughs> that would be so cool wow yeah so I guess we're going to get off of this topic because you guys aren't really fun about it. So, <laughs> Do you guys have a favorite James Earl Jones movie or you guys don't even, I mean, I know Andrea's going to watch Field of Dreams in honor of him. Finally. Look at her. Come on. Come on. Field of She's Dreams. on the field right now. <laughs> James like, would watch you too. Now it's just a thing that because I want you to, you're never going to do it. Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Come on. I just, I just have less than zero interest. Like, there's just, I, I just have no interest at all. I'm just going to bring up, okay, all right, okay. You don't have to watch that. How about E.T.? Oh fuck, Carmen! Um, <laughs> I'm just needling. This is going to be our thing from now on. I, I, it never wasn't our thing. It's always been a thing. Yeah, I don't think I will watch ET. No, I don't think I will. I, I've gone this long. I don't think I need to see it. I'm just saying, my deathbed. That's when she'll watch it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, what's going on with you guys? I'm done with my list. Karma's going to die, and in her will, she's going to be like, I give this to Andrea, but she got to watch Field of Dreams. And she's like, nope, I'm still going to watch it. Right. You will get $1 million. However, you must. Yeah. Yeah. 
publicly want view uh, publicly yeah right exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just you, you know what though i actually don't think you would like field of dreams that's the irony of it you, I don't, nor I do it, i yeah i <laughs> but i'm just saying if you loved something so much and i knew that you loved something so much i would watch it just to understand my friend better you know what i mean i'm just saying i would do that for you because that's the kind of person i am the depth i wouldn't have to do though <laughs> but you wouldn't have to because i would have already done it so oh, we can have okay. a conversation about it. You see what I mean? Like, that's why there's nothing for you to ask for. Because okay. my side of the friendship is like that. You know what I mean? Okay. Got it. <laughs> and Dre and I are never going to talk again after this show. I just want to <laughs> let you all know this is the end of our... How long have we known each other? It's just been a few years, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've known... Okay, so I got here in 1992. <laughs> It's been 30 years, but when did I meet you? Like 96? Uh, would have been probably you worked, 97. Yeah, you worked for that lady, that lady who yeah. said I was not a professional bookkeeper. <laughs> you hired me to work for that lady. That's right. It was 97. 97. Yeah. All right. I can't believe we've been friends this long because it's kind of weird. And, then, and Cynthia, you've met Andrea. Don't you think it's weird that we're friends? No. Why is it weird that we're friends? What is that? Trying to make conversation. All right, Darcy <laughs> said Kevin Costner ain't good looking. Uh, what? I don't know if it's about Kevin Costner though. He's not my type. I know people think Kevin Costner is hot, but there's only one movie that I watched. I mean, I I'll watch a movie with Kevin Costner in it because I don't mind. You know what I mean? Like I like him. I think he's fine. It's not a big deal. But the movie that I think was his best movie ever is no way out <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? is that what you're mouthing no that's a great movie i just watched that maybe like six months ago <clears throat> for the first time oh no 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 oh, like yeah, i just okay. was thinking about it and i watched it again like yep still a great movie <clears throat> yeah so if anyone is a kevin costner fan the movie you want to see is no way out and i think it's one of his first movies so good when did it come yeah. out? Oh, when did it come out? I don't know. 1980 or no. something? No. It's, I think it's from the 90s. Like early, early 90s or maybe late 80s. <clears throat> hey, Google. <laughs> when did the movie with Kevin Costner come out called No Way Out? In the United States of America, 1987. I don't need the whole thing. Just the like, answer. 1987. <laughs> like, Is that the one where he's like a government spy or not a spy or something like that no why are you giving it away why are you giving it away oh i didn't know I he's a naval officer. Remember. he's a naval officer he ain't no spy why you oh, okay i'm trying Listen, to remember i don't right. remember he works at the pentagon and that's all we're <laughs> that's all we're gonna I, say i think i did see that <laughs> rick just ruined the movie for anybody <laughs> I was trying to nobody remember. has to watch it now sorry everybody. nobody has to watch it <laughs> Okay, so what I've learned today in our show is never talk to Rick about movies. <laughs> Just call me Rick Spoiler Costa. No, no, no. Actually, he's not really a spy. Uh, he's not. It's a good he's movie. He's trying to find a spy. He's trying to find a spy. That's right. Okay, that's all you gave away, Rick. That's all you yeah. Okay. I was yeah, just trying to figure out if I saw it because I was like, it sounds familiar. I wasn't sure. Did. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's our favorite Kevin Costner movie. Anyone else have a favorite Kevin Costner movie? I mean, I did like him in Field of Dreams, not gonna lie. Uh, Field of Dreams was so good. And but... James Earl Jones, I really liked him in Field of Dreams too. Yeah, but it really was a Kevin Costner movie for sure. Mm -hmm. And Timothy Busfield. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, who's from 30 something? Okay, and Jay, you don't remember the show 30 something? I remember that show. Never watched. I mean, I watched like an, oh, a quarter of an episode, maybe. Okay. Well, anyway, Timothy Busfield is also he's the he's the person Rick on the uh, in the movie Field of Dreams who's trying to convince Kevin Costner to sell the field. Mm, okay. With the red hair and the beard, yeah, he's yeah, a pretty yeah, yeah, famous yeah. actor actually. But it's mm -hmm. okay. I mean, anyway, Cynthia, favorite Kevin Costner movie? No idea. Waterworld? You're gonna say Waterworld? It's oh God! Worst. I never. You know, I never saw that. <laughs> no one did. Clearly. <laughs> 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 so and honestly, I've never seen Field of Dreams either. 
It's all right. You don't have to. I don't expect you to. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that dry up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the thing about Field of Dreams. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. It's so the it's such an intellectual. The reason why I think you would like it in jazz is because it's an intellectual movie. It's not really a movie about baseball. You know what I mean? Okay. Like the movie 42 was about baseball to me, right? Jackie Robinson, whatever. It's like, it was such a good movie. And also uh, Chadwick Boseman. Is that how you say his name? The late, great, yeah. yeah, uh, Played Jackie Robinson. It's a great movie, but it's about baseball and about race. And you know what I mean? What was going on back then and stuff. But Field of Dreams is, uh, it's not, a. it's to me, it's not about baseball at all. No. It's about- what brings people together, but it's not about baseball. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're a baseball fan and understand what happened to the Black Sox or whatever it is, the White Sox, I don't even know what the whole thing is. Like, you know, it's Purple Shirley Sox. Jackson, whatever it is. Like, and, that, <laughs> and that adds like a whole other layer to it. You know what I mean? Um, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Like, I get kind of the whole thing, how he was disgraced and whatever, and blah, blah, blah. But I don't. That's to me, that's not what the movie is about. It's about you searching for yourself. And that's kind of what I see it as, you know, Kevin Costner is dealing with demons as we all do. And then he, you know, hears a voice and then he keeps trying to pursue what that voice is about. But for me, I don't know about you, Rick, but for me, it was about like, you know, trying to find who you are in the world, you know, and all the connections and all the things that matter to you and the people that matter to you and why. Mm-hmm. It's a very deep intellectual movie. I don't think Andrea could probably handle it, which is probably why she doesn't. I'm going to use reverse psychology now. That's probably <laughs> why she don't want to watch it because it's too deep and shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Oh. All action. Time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Darcy said okay. she likes him in the bodyguard. Okay, I'm going to say this. This is not a popular opinion. I love Whitney Houston with all my heart. I do. And I'm I'm going to get backlash for this, but I really hated watching her in that because she was such a bad actress. It was just so hard. <laughs> it was so hard. And the thing about Kevin Costner was he told her, don't worry about it. I'll help you with the acting or whatever. And he should have gotten her an acting coach. You know what I mean? Like, and she basically played herself, which makes it harder. <laughs> like for me to be okay with it. Uh, so, but I'm a stickler for it. Did you guys see the bodyguard? Mm-hmm. I agree. She played herself. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. Sorry. Right. It was alright. I didn't hate it. Yeah. I never need to see it again, and that's how you can tell I don't care. You know what I mean? Like it's just like. Hey, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Is Daniel one of your people? Yeah. Hi, Daniel. Well, I guess he said. Hi, Rick. So so there's Carmen and Cynthia and Andrea also. You can say hi to them, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so how was you guys' week, by the way? I should probably ask you. I mean, I hate talking about work. I went out to dinner last night with a guy from work. And I was I oh, I sent, I called you, right, Rick? Didn't I? I was waiting outside the restaurant or whatever. Anyways, so I called Rick because I was waiting because the restaurant, I'm not going to say the name of the restaurant, but the restaurant wouldn't seat me until my partner got there, which I have to tell you restaurants, it pisses me off because I got there early so I could have a couple of fucking drinks before he got there because he doesn't drink. You know what I mean? So, um, so I was outside, so I called Rick or I, whatever, and we were talking and then uh, he showed up and stuff. But it was a really, we didn't talk about work at all. It was an awesome dinner. It was so much fun. And I'm just, I, it was a, a, a great thing to cap off what has already been a really hard week for me. So Rick, what, how was your week this week? Not too bad. It's, work's been pretty laid back and slow for a change, which is nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Andrea, are you in Kansas? Uh, Arkansas? Well, no. No, no, no. Uh, my The hard drive on my computer failed, and I've oh. lost all of, my, uh. all of everything. So... That's how my week went. And no, I didn't, I hadn't backed it up in like a year. I know that's the kind of person I am. No, no, I'm not going to say anything about backing it up. (laughs) I don't think anyone backs up anymore. Don't you have a cloud? I don't put stuff on the cloud. I mean, I put some things, but other things I don't, you know what I mean? Like I'm not organized like that. Um, So you a Mac person? Are you a Mac? Are you a Mac person? 
Yeah. Oh, they have like the most secure yeah. cloud service. Yeah. I know, but I use uh, for all most of my documents. I use um, Word, uh, Office, like Microsoft uh, Office. So, um, so I have, whatever. Um, it doesn't, no, no, I'm just going to let you know the future because that's what happened to me and made me change how I do stuff. It's the same exact thing that happened. It just happened 10 years ago. But I mm -hmm. I have OneDrive. So um, I wouldn't use Google Drive. I mean, I know Google Drive is also an option, um, but I use OneDrive because it's a separate thing from all my personal stuff. But it automatically backs up every night and it's just everything is housed in the cloud. So even when you buy a new computer, you don't have to worry about it because you just plug it in and then it downloads. You know what I mean? It's just, but you might want to think about that. For the yeah, future. I have OneDrive. I just don't use it. So I do need to rethink how I do my yeah. thing. And there's like but personal vaults. Like, so people can't really access anything unless they know your personal you know, password. And also they ask you all those security questions and the double verification. And I'm like, baby, if you have gotten all that information, steal what you can. Because <laughs> you have done the work. My tax returns. They're yours. <laughs> like, and I ain't mean, got nothing, but go ahead and knock yourself out. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I, I finally got over that whole idea because I was so worried. What if I have everything in the cloud? Most of our stuff is already on the web. It's already out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, I use a combination of Google Drive and OneDrive. Google Drive is mostly work stuff. So all my clients have their own drive on Google. They pay for it. I do not. Okay, that's the other thing you want to do. And, um, and that way, when I quit, all I do is give a password, and they can have all their shit. And it's not on my computer. And then all my personal stuff and all my, like, credit cards, whatever, it's, it's in a whole other drive, uh, OneDrive I use. But, Rick, you were going to say something. I'm sorry. I was logged into my mom's email, which she never uses, but then I saw there was an alert and like, your social security may have been on the dark web. I'm like, oh, great. That explains why our phone rings all day long. But um, <laughs> I do use, like Daniel just mentioned, I use Dropbox. I've used that for years and years and years. And yeah, it just automatically syncs constantly. If you get a new computer, you log in, boom, everything gets downloaded automatically. Yeah. Dropbox is great too, Daniel. I don't, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I think... I think the thing that everyone should understand is that um, everything is already out on the internet. How you protect that is what's important. So speaking of your mother's social security, I just took two of my clients and explained to them that they have to, everyone should have a freeze on their credit reports. Um, so there are three credit reports, right? There's Equifax, um, Experian. Experian and TransUnion. All three of those, all you have to do is go online, answer some questions, and you can turn around and get to their freezing area. And all that, and I've had my credit reports frozen for like, again, 10 years because it's the easiest way to prevent someone from using your credit line and opening up a bank account or getting a mortgage or whatever. So it, it, most people have been hacked recently with their social security cards. Um, and their social security numbers, right? That's the big thing that happened recently. And everyone's yeah. getting those, what they think are spam emails. They're not actually spam emails, but people are trying to make money off of you saying, your social security is in the dark web. This is what happened. We can help you if you pay us $19.99 a month or whatever. You don't have to pay anybody to take care of your credit cards and your credit ratings and your uh the, the whole credit report situation. You just have to take the time to do it. And now that it's online, I used to have to call and do it because it was so long ago. You can go online, answer all those security questions like, where did you live when you were seven? You know, like things that nobody would know about you except you and they do the multiple choice thing. Set up your account and then turn around and freeze it. And what freezing it means is nobody can go and access your credit report or your credit rating until you unfreeze it. So if you go to get a mortgage or you go to take out a loan or get a credit card, you have to unfreeze it before you do that. Now it sounds complicated, but it's not. It, it, now it's so easy. You just unfreeze it for like two or three days. Each And, and you ask them, which one do you want to use? Are you going to use transunion, TransUnion to check my credit report? Right? Like when I had to get this apartment, they told me they use TransUnion. I'm like, okay, I went online, put in my password, and I unfroze it for two days and then he was able to check and then it closes again. Um, so credit karma, I don't, 
Credit Karma is another organization that charges people to do things, right? I don't, I'm not for it or against it. I'm just saying you don't need to pay anybody to do this. You just need to go to those actual credit reporting agencies and do it yourself. I don't know what you mean by freezing assets. That has nothing to do with this. Your assets are different. Um, freezing your credit reports is what you want to do. Everyone should be doing that anyway. I don't even know why people don't do that. Um, and once you set it up, it's literally just a click of a button on and off, right? Yeah, but each account is different. So TransUnion is going to have a different way. You're going to have a different password. Uh, you know what I mean? Equifax and then the other one. I always forget. I know there are two E's. I always forget them, but whatever. So, um, and also it's just a smart thing to do. You shouldn't let people have access to your credit reports anyway. And it makes you think about when you are going to get a credit card or go to, you know, open up a bank account or whatever. It makes you think about it because it gives you, you have to have a little bit of time to do things, you know? Mm. So, yeah, I suggest everyone do that immediately. And yes, the dark web, the web, the internet, none of it is going away. It's just going to get worse. So learning to protect yourself is something everyone should do anyways. And also kids. I've been telling my friends who have children, you should all have your, their social security. They're all, everybody's social security since they're born. If you have children, all their credit reports have probably been hacked and none of you know, because you don't check them. I know all the parents are freaking out right now. <laughs> Just like Andrea's like, fucking bitch. <laughs> I'm just saying everyone should be doing that. You should do it tomorrow. It's very easy. Because I've always heard you should check it, make sure there's no inaccuracies. If you see it, you got to let them know, hey, no, this is not right, blah, blah, blah. It's really easy. To, it's really, it's, I'm seriously, I used to have to call and you have to mail it in. You have to like, it was such a huge hoopla before. And now it's so much easier to do. But mm -hmm. yeah, especially everyone should, you should do it for your kids as well, no matter what their age is. If they have a social security number, you should already be freezing their credit reports immediately. Mm. Yeah. Melanie, I'm happy to um, share that information with you and I will DM you and send you the links. I'm happy to do that. I'm not prepared to do that right now, although I put it in the thing, but um, I just did this for two of my clients because and my clients, you know, the, the, we're talking about people with a lot of money. I'm not saying that people here or people listening don't have a lot of money, but even my clients know that they're about to be hacked if they haven't been already. You know what I mean? So they were like, oh. um, so yeah. And people are always trying to make money. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I don't know how we got into that. How did we get into that? Well, somebody needed to hear it. We were talking about Julia Roberts, right? No, we were talking about Andrea's work. Oh yeah. The cloud, the cloud. Oh, oh, the yeah, cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh I'm yeah. so sorry. So what did you do? You've lost everything. I'm just busy recreating documents. <laughs> That's what I've been Are doing all sure week. You lost everything? Are you sure? It's really hard to lose uh, it. Next step is to send it to some, you know, send the whole thing up to some company who does data recovery and see if they can get anything. But, you know, because I had it like a computer guy went and looked at it and he's like, yeah, I can't get anything off of it. And I was like, you know, okay, fine. Um, so I need to send yeah, it to special, like a data re specialist. <clears throat> yeah, specialist has to do it. They should be able to get something off of it, at least. Not everything, but something. Anything. No, I mean, nothing's not ever it. lost if it's in the memory. And it's really, you really have to be a computer genius to erase everything. The only way to really erase anything on any computer or laptop is to restore it back to its original. And even that's quite a process. So it's in there, but you got to get somebody who knows. I don't know how to reach. I don't know how to do that. But yeah. then it's like the money thing. Like, is it worth it? You know what I mean? And sometimes I see it as a blessing. You know what I mean? Like, and I got to start over. It's cleansing. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But hard drives do not last forever. I'm just letting you know. And if you yeah. ever hear all of a sudden a click, click, click inside your computer, that's probably your hard drive's getting ready to die. And you better back up everything quick. Like quick. Yeah. But how old was your computer? Your computer's not that old. Not, not that old. I don't know. I was working on a document for a client. Went to go look at it the next morning, and my computer wouldn't even start up. So you know, this is what oh, oh yeah, no, that sounds hard. Okay. Can um, I just say, um, Rick, those two things behind you, it looks like you got Mickey ears on. Does. Oh, the, with the hats. <laughs> it's the hat. 
And did anybody oh, notice? All about the joy. Are those the stickers? I just put the whole thing on there. I couldn't decide how to do it. I just, I'm going to go slap it on there. So, yeah. I love that you guys are so cool and buying stuff. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Um, I have to, at some point, set up the bank account that will transfer that money because I guess money sits in there until I, I haven't set that up yet. So, anyways, but thank you. Um, but the All About the Joy stickers, they, you said they came they came separate letters. No, not separate letters. Each separate word words? is a separate sticker. Each word is a separate sticker. And I was like, oh, oh I didn't think it was going to come like that. So, I was like, well, I can go like layer it one on top of the other or not couldn't decide so you know what just slap it on there and we'll figure it out later i just think it's so cool i don't know it's fine. i didn't look at i i can only design what i can design i just did the graphic i didn't do the they decide how to do that part mm -hmm. i don't know but i appreciate you i appreciate you <laughs> stop buying stuff up here no everyone should buy stuff everyone should buy stuff but i mean i feel bad my people buying stuff <laughs> you know what i mean like we like to support i love that cup <laughs> though okay can i just say i am proud uh, andrea hasn't seen that so this cup i designed it says it really is all about the joy mm. it's a cute cup that I, looks I am like a get nice that. size mug too i need a new yeah, mug it's decent yeah, that's kind of cool, right? Yep. Andrea, I think you need four. Aren't there four people in your family? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to have like a set for everybody? You know what I'm just saying? You're I mean, coming di different colors. Your Christmas so card photo, you know? <laughs> I'm so bad. I, I suck at selling stuff. I have a picture of Carmen at the bottom. <laughs> oh, that would be good to put like my picture at the bottom. <laughs> So that's a great idea. We should do that. We should do that. No. Look, at, I appreciate everyone who's interested in the swag at all. It's at allaboutthejoy.com. There's a store right there. You could check it out. The prices are not any. I mean, you you guys have bought stuff and it's not crazy, right? I didn't no. mark them up really. There's like a dollar that we get. That's why I haven't set up the thing. But any money we do get just goes back into editing <laughs> the software and everything else I pay for. Um, but we just appreciate it because it's kind of cool and fun. I'm going to get the tote bag. That's what I want. Hmm. I'm going to get the tote bag and see if that's a really good, uh, I'm going to get that. And then that cup. Yeah. And then Andrea, you're buying four cups, which I love you for that. So cute. <laughs> Andrea's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, crazy Rick merch. <laughs> You didn't see him last week. He had the whole, like, he had, like, Cynthia, the whole yeah. outfit on. He had the hat and the cushions oh, yeah. and he was drinking the, I, I think the hat too, right? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I did good. I mean, it took me way too long. I know, I know, I know. So, anyways, that's me selling all about the joy, merch, swag. So, um, anything else, guys, before I wrap this up a little well, bit? I didn't hear about Cynthia's week. I don't think she meant Cynthia, Cynthia, how was your week? You know what? I always talk to Cynthia in the green room beforehand. That's why. But go ahead, girl. <laughs> how was your week, sis? It actually it flew by this week. Um, but I think it's because most of the time I had to work with my headphones on. Because the the lady I was working with, she was kind of getting on my nerves. Mm. <laughs> she oh. kept complaining about certain situations that were happening, even after they were already resolved. She kept going on, and I'm like, "Can you just let it go?" I had to keep telling her that, "Let it go, just let it go," and she would just keep going on. So I had to put my ear earphones on and tune her out. <laughs> that's the one that's been there for a long time. Uh huh. Oh boy. Oh no! Are you creating enemies? No, no. I just, I just keep kind of keep to myself. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Oh, thank you. Oh, Linda just said I enjoyed the show. Everyone have a fantastic night. Thank you for stopping oh, by. I appreciate everyone and people who are in the room. I, uh, I'm grateful. Um, but Cynthia, so you're making enemies and you're gonna last how long? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how long I'm going to last there, but... <laughs> no, the doctors like you, though, though right? I mean, that's yeah, all the time. doctors like you, yeah. But really, you think, you're, you think you made a mistake? No, no. It's just having to deal with this one person. And the doctor's away right now at a conference in Florence. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, the cat's away, the mice will play. Mm -hmm. So she's just kind of acting up right now because the doctor's not there. But okay. in a way, she's kind of making us look bad because we have a visitor from New Zealand, a doctor from New Zealand, who's with us for six weeks. 
and mm. is like hearing all of this complaining and stuff like that. And I'm telling her, cut it out. Like I'm trying to joke with her. Like, I think you're scaring the doctor, you know, <laughs> just so she'll stop. But yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, yeah, I have no, I don't know what to say. I think it's a hard situation because you are the new person and maybe she feels comfortable to complain to you, which I guess so. Not what you I want. I bring that out. So I don't know. <laughs> so, that's a tough are... <laughs> Go ahead and try. I, I didn't hear you. I said earphones are a good solution in that situation. Just tune her out. Don't participate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a small office though, right? It's only you guys. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why um, it's really hard because there's no interference. <laughs> there's nobody else. Right. So, like, if I'm with you guys and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, well, she, little... it's funny because, like, I my desk is, is behind her. <laughs> mm. Oh, wait, what did you say, Cynthia? My desk is behind her. So she oh. can't even see, like, my facial expressions or anything. I see the back of her head. So she's just going on and on and on. So I'm listening to music. Then all of a sudden she'll turn around and say something. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, you're talking to me? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to pray on that situation for you because I feel like that could get really bad quick. <laughs> that's, one of those, that's one of those situations where you either want to have a really good relationship, even if it's a professional in a small office like that, or it's going to get bad mm-hmm. and untenable. Hopefully she'll retire soon. She ain't going <laughs> to retire. She's one of those people, right? She ain't going to retire. She's not gonna retire. I don't think so. How old is she? She's about to turn sixty. No, oh, she's she's play, she's not gonna retire. Are you kidding me? You want to wait until you're at least sixty-seven to get the most benefits from your retirement plan, unless you're already rich. Trust me, I've investigated this. <laughs> Did I retire at fifty? You know what I mean? Like, I got this shit down pat. I was like, when do you get Medicare? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Look at I'm looking for the day I can retire. It ain't gonna be anytime soon because <laughs> I don't want to live, you know, in Arkansas or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I need to live in LA. Um, okay, with that, everyone, we're at the hour mark. It, I'm so grateful for everyone who's tuning in and listening. Thank you to everyone in the chat. I'm so grateful for everyone who shows up. Remember, we do have swag at allaboutthejoy.com. The store is there. Uh, please follow us and like us. And yep, look at the beautiful t shirt that Cynthia is wearing and the glow and the hats and the, every, the cup. And the cup, the slurpy cup that Rick is just I, I didn't slurp. I was good today. I didn't slurp. I know. Last week we were cracking up on that thing. It was so funny. Um, and Andrea ain't got no swag because she don't love us. But she going to get something soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love you, Wands. It's just been a minute. So I have to be mean to you a little bit. You do get that love, right? Yes, I know. Okay. Right, I love you, girl. All right. So everyone, thank you so much. We'll see you again next week. And remember, it really is all about oh, that joy. joy. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for stopping by All About the Joy. Be better and stay beautiful, folks. Have a sweet day.